I have a confession to make. I hate parental controls. They're insanely complicated to set up. There's loopholes all over the place. And just when you think you've figured it out, something new comes along and you've got to set it up all over again. It's time to stop the madness. Here's everything you need to know about parental controls today on Governing Goliath. The internet can be an interesting place for kids. It's largely unregulated by design, and anyone of any age with an internet connection can find out information on just about anything. But an innocent Google search or errant website address type will inevitably lead straight to explicit material. For example, Anyone who visited www.whitehouse.com in the 90s would have been greeted with an eyeful of porn. Thankfully, the site's been revamped for political commentary, but back in the day, full of porn. And with the COVID pandemic, let's be brutally honest here. Our kids are spending way more time online than they're used to or that we're comfortable with. Anyone who says that their kids' internet consumption has gone down during the pandemic is completely full of shit. You should defriend them immediately and never talk to them again. Because here's the reality. Because of the pandemic, internet consumption is up across the board. Zoom and Google Classroom usage is through the roof. YouTube is getting 10 times more views than Netflix. Video chat is up almost 80% in some cases. Internet video like TikTok, which by the way is the most dangerous app ever created, and if you don't believe me, you should watch this video. It has completely overtaken ESPN. It should be no surprise that overall data usage has increased by 47% since the pandemic began. So let me ask you something, and I want you to be brutally honest with me here. How much of that usage are your kids responsible for? And how much of their usage is completely ungoverned? Like I said, I hate setting up parental controls, but I know that we have to. So in this episode, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about parental controls. The first thing you need to know is that if you jump into the deep end here and start trying to control everything out of the gate, you're going to set yourself up for a serious epic fail. So don't do that. Instead, consider the task akin to eating an elephant. And how do we eat an elephant? That's right, one step at a time. So to plate this elephant up, you need to have a strategy. See, parental controls only serve two purposes if you really think about it. They restrict the time that your kid spends on a device and they restrict the content that your kid can access during the time that you grant them. Parental controls will be a lot easier to manage if you keep this strategy in mind. For each of the four categories of parental controls that I'm about to cover, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, am I restricting time, am I restricting content, or am I restricting both? Remember, simplicity is key here. Keep in mind, the more strict you make these controls, the more overhead you will have to manage. So if you lock your kid's device down like Fort Knox, you're inevitably going to have to grant them exceptions as they pop up. And these exceptions are a huge headache. So with each restriction, you need to ask yourself how much pushback you're willing to deal with. And this is going to be different for every parent and every kid. The first category we're going to cover is power. Here's the thing, you control it. And I don't just mean in the figurative sense, 
I mean in the literal sense. You can easily control any electronic device that doesn't run on battery by using a smart plug like a Wemo adapter. Just plug the device you want to restrict into this adapter and from your phone you'll be able to control the times that the device is allowed to be powered on. And if you want a non-techy version of this control, just buy a timer switch like this one. They're about five bucks. And these adapters work great for TVs, gaming consoles, desktop computers, and always on devices like the Amazon Echo. The next category is a little more complex. This is your home internet connection. Remember to ask yourself, are you looking to restrict time, content, or both? So let's cover time first. A draconian approach to restricting time is simply to plug in your modem or Wi-Fi access point into one of those smart plug adapters that I mentioned earlier. But when it goes off, the whole internet connection in your house will go out and you'll have to switch it back on in the morning. So for most families, this probably is not a viable solution. The next best thing is to disavow certain devices from accessing the internet during specific times. There's a few services out there that do this, but I think that Circle is probably the best solution that I've seen, and it costs about 130 bucks a year. It's both a device and an easy to use app. You simply plug this device into your network and it will detect all of the devices that are connected to your Wi-Fi. From there, you can set up monitoring and restrictions on certain specific devices for specific family members. The off time feature, for example, lets you set up times where your child's smart device cannot access the internet. Want quiet time during dinner? No problem. No internet connection on that device from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Boom. You can also set up time limits on Circle per device per family member. And you can apply these time limits over the entire device or just strict restrict individual apps inside of it. This is very cool stuff and it's pretty intuitive to use iOS has a similar parental controls feature called Screen Time for iPhones and iPads, and it's free. In fact, I've covered parental controls for iOS in depth in this video, so be sure to check it out if this is something that you're interested in. However, iOS restrictions only work on iOS devices. They obviously don't work on the Android platform, and they don't work on laptops, desktops, or smart TVs. So if you've got a mixed platform household, Circle is still probably your best bet. So we've just covered power and internet restrictions. Now let's cover device restrictions. As I mentioned previously, Circle does a good job of setting up restrictions at the per device level. It does this by detecting and restricting the device's MAC address. See, every networked device has its own unique alphanumeric identifier, and no two identifiers are alike. So you can think of MAC addresses kind of like social security numbers. It's very easy to target specific devices. And device-specific restrictions work great on devices that only have one user, like phones, tablets, and maybe even laptops. But shared devices, like family desktops, are a totally different story. If you set device specific restrictions on a shared device, it will affect everyone using that device instead of just the person that you're targeting. So the best way to manage family computers is to set up a separate login just for parents and one that's just for kids. Then you can restrict the kids login. And while you're there, you should also remove their administrative privileges so they can't accidentally install viruses and malware on your shared family computer. Don't worry, I'm going to leave links on how to set up restrictions for Windows 10, Mac OS, and Chrome OS in the description below. So now we've covered parental controls for power, internet, and devices. 
I've saved the hardest and trickiest category for last, and that is parental controls over specific apps like YouTube and TikTok, and also internet browsers like Safari and Chrome. Fortunately, Circle has you covered on a lot of this, but there are a few caveats here. So let's start with apps and then we'll move on to the browsers. Circle does have the ability to block inappropriate content for individual devices and family members. YouTube is very popular with kids, but there's also a lot of adult content on YouTube. So with Circle, you can simply turn on the YouTube restricted feature and you should be good to go. You can also block individual apps from ever being accessed or installed, like say TikTok, which again, in my opinion, should be totally banned. But if your kid absolutely has to have TikTok and there's no way that you can win this battle, there are actually a couple of good safety restrictions within the app itself. So you definitely want to read this parent's guide to TikTok if your kids are using this app. Again, don't worry, I'll leave a link to it in the description. But the most troublesome app on any device is probably the internet browser. And the most dangerous website is probably Google. It doesn't matter what browser is being used or what sites are being visited. Circles filter, while not perfect, does a pretty good job of filtering out explicit and mature content, but you shouldn't trust it completely. Inevitably, there are going to be some sites that don't get filtered appropriately, so you'll need their history feature to see what sites have been visited on any given day. So now we've covered the four categories of parental controls, power, internet, devices, and apps, that also includes browsers. I'm gonna do a much deeper dive on Circle soon since I've spent so much time mentioning it in this episode, but for now, I wanted to give you an overview of everything you need to know about parental controls. As promised, I've left links to all of my research, products that I've mentioned, and guides in the description below. I hope you found this episode helpful, but please feel free to leave me a comment if there's anything that I missed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.